Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested in a quick unboxing of the Generation 2 Ruger Precision Rifle, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you're interested to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you'll get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Welcome to this week's video. In this week's episode, we're gonna unbox our Generation 2 Ruger Precision Rifle. For those of you that are fans of the channel, you might wonder why in the world are we unboxing a Ruger Precision Rifle? You already have a Ruger Precision Rifle. And you're not wrong. This is a Generation 2 Ruger Precision Rifle. And if you want to stick around for it at the end of the video, we'll talk about a few things why we bought it, go over the features that it has. But at the beginning here, we're going to go over to see what comes in the box. And fair warning guys, I'm really not a big fan of unboxing videos, but I know some of you guys are interested to see what actually comes in a box when you buy one of these. And I thought this is the simplest way to go. One thing to keep in mind as we do this, guys, Generation 2s are kind of being clearanced out right now. By the time you're watching this video, you might not be able to find one. The only difference I'm aware of between the Generation 2 and the Generation 3 is the handguard. But again, we'll kind of go over that at the end of the video. So we might as well get right to it. Start unboxing. If you're really interested in the bottom of the box, that's what it looks like. But as always, guys, what we're interested in is what's inside. The first thing that we're going to find inside is paperwork. But let's face it, guys, that's really not what we're here for. Turn on side, you're going to see what it looks like. You're going to easily notice it's got the rifle with the folded stock already folded to make the box a little bit smaller. And right out of the gate, you guys are going to notice it comes with two magazines that are the 10 round P mags for 308. Going a little further, we'll see that it comes with a lock. And if you're aware of the guys, this rifle does come with a muzzle brake. And so it does come with a thread protector if you want to take the muzzle brake off. It is nice to know that that's included with the rifle. Another thing you'll notice, it comes with a section of Picatinny rail that is key mod, so that way you can connect it to the rifle. Of interest, you're going to see it also comes with a key mod Picatinny rail mount, as well as a stud for your bipod and a QD mount. So we'll start pulling out some styrofoam. You'll see that the bowl comes out, and you'll also notice that if you're familiar with the Generation 1, in this generation, they have changes to a anodized metal rather than the plastic was there and with a riding O-ring. And with that out of the way, guys, we might as well get to the good stuff. We need to pull out the rifle. So as you guys can see, this is what the rifle looks like. Now we've got everything out of the box. Obviously, we will have to install our bolt, and that's what we'll do next. Simply pushing the button on the other side, you can swivel the buttstock. And then we can go about the business of inserting our bolt. And it's just that easy. And if you're interested and you're unaware, there's a button on the other side of the rifle that you can push to get it to release. So that's pretty much all you're going to get in the box. We're going to go over some features of the rifle if you're interested. And like I said, we'll talk about why I purchased it at the end if you guys really want to know. Starting off, guys, like I mentioned, this is a Generation 2. The current generation is actually the 3. I could be wrong. Please correct me below if I am wrong. I believe the only actual difference between the Generation 2 and the Generation 3 is the handguard. Now, going from the Generation 1, which I have in 6.5 Creedmoor, they actually changed the handguard as well. This used to have a full Picatinny rail all the way down the side, and my 6.5 Creedmoor didn't actually come with a muzzle brake. The muzzle brake is now standard on the Generation 2, I believe as well in Generation 3. I did pick one up and added one to my Generation 1 anyway. It works pretty well, and I am excited to try it on this one. Probably the first time I've mentioned, this actually is a 6mm Creedmoor. Not that it's going to matter... Um, the only differences you're really going to see from one model to the next, I believe, are the barrel length. And if you are really interested in that, both the 6.5 Creedmoor and 6mm versions are going to have a 24-inch barrel. The 308 option is going to have a 20-inch barrel, so obviously it'll be a little shorter. Talking about the barrel, we might as well get into the details on that. Obviously, this is just a stock barrel. It's a Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Molly Steel Barrel, 5R Rifling, Ruger claims minimum rifle bore and groove dimensions, minimum headspace, and a centralized chamber. And in case you're wondering, the actual part number for this Generation 2 is the 18016. The Generation 3 part number is 18032 for this particular caliber. Now going a little further down the rifle, like I mentioned, this is a key mod handguard. This is a, n a nicer model than the actual Gen 1 as far as at least right out of the gate. I know when I received my Gen 1, it really had only two mounting screws down here on the lower. The barrel was significantly mounted off center from the handguard. You could take it apart and try and move it but it was kind of a lost cause. A lot of people were replacing the handguards on the Generation 1s. Um, I have not on mine, but that's a whole other story. I am excited to try out this Generation 2 handguard. Again, in key mod, doesn't really hurt my feelings, but if you're going to pick up a Generation 3, be aware. M-Lock is kind of the new standard. I believe Ruger's moved it to it on, the, on all the new Generation 3 models. 
Don't want to get into a key mod M-Lock discussion, but realize that M-Lock is probably a little bit stronger and going to be the platform that more things are going to accept in the future. But guys, for the discount that I got this Gen 2 at, I am more than willing to take the handguard. Going further down the rifle, obviously you'll see that it has a standard Picatinny mount for your scope. Lots of space on there to move it back and forth um, in no particular order here. This does have the same magazine system. Ruger calls this their, their multi-magazine interface. It does interchangeably use AICS M110 SR25 DPMS Magpul style magazines. They advertise it does work with some M14 magazines, but that's kind of a hit or miss. I have several different style magazines that I use in my 6.5 Creedmoor that I'll be able to interchangeably use. And so, and honestly, I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to go to my magazine video, if you're interested to see what magazines that this accepts. Moving down to the trigger assembly, this is what they call the Ruger Marksman Adjustable Trigger. It is adjustable all the way from 5 pounds down to 2.25 pounds. It does have the safety interface in the middle of the trigger. And honestly, guys, there are replacement triggers out here. Timmy does sell one. However, I still have my stock trigger, and I have no plans on changing it in this rifle. I find it to be a very good trigger, and I don't believe that I have any real need to change it. But if you like to customize your rifle, and you'd like to have a Timmy trigger, there's probably another option on the market when you're watching this video. But there are options out there if you'd like to change it. Moving a little further down, though it may not look like it, this is an ambidextrous safety. I believe you can pull a safety mechanism out and reverse it if you're a left-handed shooter. By all means, I'm not going to move it because I'm not a left-handed shooter. I guess the grip that they call on this is actually the Extended Reach Trigger AR Grip. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Obviously, AR grips are not very expensive. I would not think twice about switching that out just as quickly as you got your rifle. You can get yourself a nice Magpul grip of your choosing. Put it on there with very little effort and probably have a much nicer interface. Though, obviously, if you want to shoot out of the box, by all means, you certainly can. Now, guys, I kind of skipped over it, but this is a 20 MOA rail. There are aftermarkets if you'd like to change this out. I think you can go actually go to a zero MOA rail. I'm sure all I have to do is, is Google Picatinny Rail RPR, and you will find some type of replacement if you feel the need to. In my particular case, I really don't at this time have no interest in changing. The 20 MOA has worked fine for me, and uh, I believe it's going to get me to where I need to go without having to add any additional elevation. Um, in case you're not familiar, the bolt on these Rugers, you're going to feel a little bit of friction, make a little bit of noise. But as you run this bolt, it's going to smooth right out. After you run the bolt back and forth a couple hundred times, you're really not even going to think about it. It does have a 70 degree bolt throw, so it's not difficult to run. I don't want to get into too much detail, however, if you do need to take your bolt apart, the tools to do so are in the bolt assembly. Plenty of videos on YouTube about that, so I'm not going to cover it today. Now guys, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail about it, but obviously this does come with Ruger's adjustable stock. This particular stock, love it or hate it, it's what comes on it. To be perfectly honest, I took the stock off my Generation 1, and it's very likely that's what's going to happen to this stock. Not that it's bad, it's perfectly shootable. You can adjust your comb height, snap it right back into place. It'll stay there pretty well. Obviously, you can adjust your length of pull as well with your QD system. Again, I don't have anything specific against it, but certainly a stock is something that you can think about upgrading. You can certainly shoot it the way it is out of the box, but it is something you might want to think about upgrading down the road. And if you're actually interested, I will tell you that the Gen 3 PRS Magpul stock is what I put on my other rifle. I will say that this does significantly change the length of pull on the rifle. I was able to find this rifle for $750, and honestly, that's most of the reason why I purchased it. $750 for a rifle like this is an unbelievable deal. Had I not already owned the 6.5 Creedmoor version, I probably would have purchased that again, because I do love the 6.5 Creedmoor round. I've had a lot of luck reloading it, and if you're interested in it, by all means, guys, you should subscribe. I have a lot of videos talking about reloading for 6.5 Creedmoor. But since I already had the 6.5 Creedmoor, I really had no interest in the 308. Sorry, guys. Before I purchased this, I did not own an actual rifle projectile in 6mm. I had thought about looking at a 243 Winchester, possibly in a Thompson Center, but it wasn't the twist rate that I wanted. I believe the twist rate in this barrel is a 1 in 7.7, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to actually stabilize those heaviest bullets. I, do, I did purchase some DTAC 115s to try out in it, so if you're interested in that, by all means you should subscribe because that content is coming at some point in time. Most of all, guys, for $750, if you were to purchase this rifle, swap out the barrel, sell it to someone who's already burnt out their 6mm Creedmoor barrel, and put a new rifle cut barrel on there, you should still probably basically have a brand new rifle with a rifle cut barrel for under $1,000. In case you're unaware, there's actually quite a few aftermarket barrel manufacturers for these now, and a lot of caliber options 
not just the 243 Winchester, the 6mm Creedmoor, the 6.5 Creedmoor, or the 308 that this rifle has been offered in since it has debuted. But I thought I'd give 6mm Creedmoor a go. I have purchased the die set so I can reload it. Depending if you'd like to convert 6.5 Creedmoor brass to 6mm Creedmoor, I actually have purchased some actual 6mm Creedmoor proper head stamp brass, and that's what I'll be using going forward. Basically, guys, I couldn't turn it down for the price. $750 is really a bargain basement price for this rifle. Very interested in seeing what 6mm Creedmoor will do. If it's as easy to reload for a 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm very excited what I can do with this rifle. I'll save it for another video, but being able to compare what the actual ballistics of the 6mm versus the 6.5, I'm interested to see how it goes out at distance. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it informative. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. If you're interested in all the content I have, please subscribe to the channel. There will be a lot of 6mm Creedmoor content coming down the road. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and until next week, stay safe in small groups.